Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to end up just where it started, which is right in the middle of nowhere. Morning, Commissioner. Steve? Well, where am I going this time? The car, West Africa. Steve? I want you to think back about five years to the fall of Berlin. Fall of Berlin? What's that got to do with... Now, wait a minute. What's the matter? Commissioner, I'm a pretty patient guy. You send me out on a lot of wild goose chases, and I never say a word. But if you think I'm going to go looking for that guy again... Did I mention any names, You Steve? don't have to. Look, from the best available evidence, when that chancellery in Berlin was burned, the top dog died. Three times in the last five years, you've had me running around the world investigating rumors that he was still alive. I've never been able to prove a thing. That's exactly right, Steve. We've never been able to prove a thing, one way or the other. Ah, look, Commissioner. You look, Steve. We all know that an elaborate escape plan had been worked out for him, that the key figure in that escape plan was a U-boat commander named Captain Schiller. Sure, we all know that, but so what? Captain Schiller died in the Berlin Blitz, too. Correction, Steve. A clerk attached to the Chesley staff identified one of the burned bodies as that of Captain Schiller. Just a minute. Are you trying to tell me... That... I'm trying to tell you that an ex-U.S. Navy commander named Williamson, who's in the importing business in Dakar, saw Captain Schiller there two days ago. What? Oh, he must have been mistaken. He might have been, and then again, he might not have been. That's up to you to find out. Get over to Dakar, Steve. Talk to Williamson. Then go anywhere and do anything you have to to get to the bottom of this. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another dangerous assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a simple little matter of flying to West Africa to investigate a rumor that's been floating around the world for the last five years. A rumor nobody's ever been able to prove or disprove. I get all the cinches. It's Monday when my plane lands in Dakar, and I head for the West African Exporting Company in Williamson. I guess you probably figure I've been seeing things lately, don't you, Mitchell? Well, at this point, yes. Well, I'm positive the man I saw here in Dakar the night before last was Captain Schiller, and he was very much alive. Where did you see him, Williamson? Coming out of the Michelin. That's a little bar near the waterfront. Look, I still don't understand how come you were able to make such a positive identification. I knew Schiller. We met during the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. He was a super stinker. The kind that makes quite an impression on you. So that's why I remembered his face so well. I see. Well, okay, I'm going to phone the commissioner and ask him to check up on the German clerk who identified Captain Schiller as being dead. Then I want you to show me this bar where you spotted him. Brother... In this dive, you could use an oxygen mask. You see him anywhere, Williamson? No. Let's talk to the bartender. Okay. Uh, we will see you. Uh, did you ever see the man in this picture before, bartender? Uh, let me see it. But uh, of course, monsieur. You happen to know his name? Oui, Captain Strom. Strom? He commands a small freighter. He comes to the car two or three times. He always spends much money. I see. How long has he been in town this trip? Mm, well, several days, monsieur. Even now, his freighter is loading, ready to depart. Okay, thanks. Come on, Williamson. Let's mosey down to the waterfront and take a look. Huh? There's the freighter, Mitchell. Yeah. Hey, they're loading crates out of that warehouse. Hey, look, up on deck. Yeah, Captain Schiller. Keep back in the shadows. Right. You know, I'd like to find out what's in those crates. Wait, that looks like a side door to the warehouse just ahead of us. Let's try for it, huh? Mm -hmm. Any 
anybody spot us? I don't think so. Inside, quick. Dark in here. Oh, great. A guard. Quick, get behind those crates. Okay. Can you spot him, Mitchell? I can see his flashlight. He's heading this way. Yes, yeah, sir. Probably got a gun, too. Yeah, look. When he gets closer, I'll jump him. Would we? No. <laughs> That was quick. Yeah, it's got to work fast. It's only a question of minutes before they'll miss him. Yeah, look, there's a crowbar over there. Yeah. Well, one crate's better than any other, I guess. I'll try this one. The guard moving any? No. Well, he's keeping the lantern now. Good. Okay. Hand me his flashlight, will you? No. <clears throat> Here you are. Hmm. Nothing but a bunch of paintings. What kind of a cargo is that? Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm no art student, but I recognize a few of these. They're masterpieces. Hey, Mitchell. Hey, th this could be some of the stuff the Nazis looted from Europe. If I will get you ten, it is. So they had it hidden here in Dakar all the time. And Schiller has been delivering it little by little to the head art collector himself. Well, you've got enough evidence to grab, Schiller. Look, that's the last thing in the world I want to do right now. I'm a lot more interested in finding out just whom he's delivering this stuff to mm. and where. You better get back to town. I'll check with you later. Williamson leaves, and I start for the freighter, but just as I get up to it, a figure starts down the gangway. Captain Schiller. I duck back into the shadows. He steps onto the pier and starts in my direction. I flatten myself against the wall of the warehouse. It keeps coming. Then, when he's about ten feet away... Schiller grabs at his stomach and crumples onto the pier. The shots came from my left, and I can hear someone running along the pier. I take off after him, but my foot hits a cleat, and I go sprawling. By the time I get to my feet, it's too late. The killer's disappeared. Suddenly, I hear a chain rattle. The freighter, they're hauling in the gangplank and getting underway. This is just great. I've got to find out where that freighter's heading for, but how? Then I remember the unconscious guard in the warehouse. I head for the door, but just as I get there, it opens, and out he comes. Hey, remember me? Hey, where's that freighter going? Get away from me. Okay. Suppose you try that wall on for size. Come on, open up. Where's that freighter heading? I will not tell you. Okay, take another bounce. Uh, open up. No, no. I... Okay, I can keep this up all night. No, no, stop, stop. Let's have it. The ship is sailing for Casarno. Casarno, where's that? Small port on South American coast. Okay. No, I mean... Oh, another gun, huh? Yeah, another gun. Ah! <laughs> guard slowly sags to the pier. Trying to plug me, he'd done likewise to himself, so now at least he won't be able to get word to that freighter that I know where it's heading. I put in a call to the local police, and they come and haul the two bodies away. And an hour later, I'm standing in the morgue with a gent named Inspector Bove viewing the remains of the late Captain Schiller. So all this time, the world has believed this man perished in a bomb shelter under the German Chancellor in Berlin five years ago. At huh? any rate, he is dead now, and we have seen all we can see here in the mouth. I will slide the drawers up. There. One moment, please. Huh? Mm, looks like we've got a visitor, Bove. I would like to view the body, if I may. I did not hear you come in, mademoiselle. I did not wish to disturb you, gentlemen. You are perhaps aware that the morgue is not on the list of sites for tourists to visit here in Dakar. One must have credentials. Here are mine. Lisa Hessler. Yeah. Trans-European news agency? You are a correspondent? As you see. Uh, look, Bovey, maybe we'd all better go back to your office and talk this thing I'm over. I'm sorry, but I have a right to see the body. Since when is the murder of a freighter skipper named Captain Strom news? Please be kind enough to step aside. But... Inspector, do you wish to be put on record as having refused an accredited newspaper correspondent's right to view a body in some more? Yeah, I am sorry, Monsieur Mitchell, but she is within her rights. Okay, take a look, lady. Thank you. Mm. Are you quite certain, gentlemen? Certain of what? Certain that this dead man is Captain Schiller. Well, huh? uh, according to his papers, this guy's name is Strom. Yeah, I know. But I'm inclined to think, as you also apparently are, that this man is Schiller. Oh? Mind telling us why you're interested in him? I've made a career of him. What do you mean? For five years, I've been trying to track him down... 
You see, I've always been convinced that Schiller did not die in that burning bomb shelter under the chancery in Berlin. I felt if I could find him alive, he might lead me to someone else who might not have died in that fire. Sounds like you're dealing in a lot of mites, Lisa. Perhaps. And yet those mites, as you call them, might lead me to the biggest news story of the century. Um, well, what does your editor think about all this? Now, unfortunately, he thinks I'm slightly crazy. He threatens to fire me unless I give up this idea and return to Europe. I see. Well, you've got to admit, the idea is pretty fantastic. Is it, Mr. Mitchell? Look, figure it this way. Even if this guy is Captain Schiller, he's dead. You can't get any information or leads out of him. Where does that leave you? <laughs> unfortunately, at the end of the line, my editor would not even print a story about this unless I could find something further. That's what I mean. Five years of chasing a shadow. Now it ends on the slab of a morgue in Descartes. Well, that is life, I suppose. Good evening, gentlemen. Mademoiselle. So long, Lisa. Ah, there, there. One cannot help feeling sorry for five years' work on one story and then... Look, save your sympathy, Bove. I've got to keep her thinking that this is the end of the line for her. If she got one inkling, it wasn't. And if a single whisper of it ever hit the newspapers, this whole deal would go up in smoke. I see. Well, Inspector, thanks for everything. Looks like my next stop is South America. So the next morning I get aboard the plane. I sit there as we take off, patting myself on the back for getting Lisa Hessler off the trail. Then I start getting an uneasy feeling right between the shoulder blades. I look up, and there, standing in the aisle beside me, is the reason for my jitters. Good morning, Mr. Mitchell. Lisa Hessler. <laughs> so, we are both flying to South America. What a coincidence. Uh, yeah. You decide to take a vacation, maybe? Yeah, yeah you might call it a vacation. See, I happened to hear last night of a little port in South America called Cosano. Cosano. That doesn't sound like much of a spot for a vacation. I also happened to hear that the freighter commanded by Captain Schiller, or Captain Strom, if you prefer, is owned by the Mullendorfer Freight Lines, whose home port is Cosano. So, I thought this would be a perfect spot for a vacation. Oh, great. Huh? Looks like you've got a few sources of information I hadn't counted on. Yeah, I have, Steve. Look, I just don't want any publicity on this thing until it's over one way or another, Lisa. Then you must realize we are on opposite sides of the fence, Steve. You would like to keep the search a secret. I intend to write this story for millions of readers all over the world. I see. Ah, uh, okay, Lisa. You're asking for trouble. <laughs> it is to be a duel between us, then. I'm afraid the cards are stacked against you. Are they? I warn you, Steve, do not underestimate me. It would be the biggest mistake of your life. As a matter of fact, it might even be fatal. You are listening to Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Well, this is just great. Here I am on a super secret mission. I know that one peep out of anybody and I'm cooked. And now I'm up against a girl who's all out to spread it in every newspaper in the world. Our plane lands in South America, and, and it's another day by train to Casarno, and at the depot, Lisa disappears, probably trying to find the offices of the Muhlendorfer freight line, so I slip a cab driver five pesos and get there ahead of her. Inside, there's a sleepy-looking clerk idly swatting at cockroaches with a newspaper. <coughs> nice shot. Gracias, senor. I seldom miss. Well, you probably get a lot of practice. I see quite a few targets running around. <coughs> One less. What is it you want, senor? Well, I'd like a little information about your shipping line. Information? What is there to tell about it? That's what I want to find out. You see, I've got quite a little freight I want to ship, and... Oh, I'm afraid our line is not for you, senor. Oh? What do you mean? Well, we operate but one ship, and that one is under contract to an importing company. Hey, senor, there is a big one crawling along the counter. If you'll step out of the way. Sure. That's the uh, ship that Captain Strom commands? <laughs> you missed. You are crowding me, senor. Sorry. Uh, when will the ship be in? Quien sabe, who knows? I'm sorry, I cannot help you, senor. 
I see. Okay. Well, keep them flying, Buster. But cockroaches do not fly, senor. <laughs> oh, Steve. Well, hello, Lisa. So, you beat me here. Yeah, but it didn't do me much good. Clerk seems to be specializing in knowing nothing about anything. Well, since you have told me what you found out, I tell you what I found out. I've been at the waterfront and learned the ship is expected the morning after tomorrow. Oh? Say, you're being pretty obliging all of a sudden, aren't you, Lisa? Well, let us just say I would like to beat you in a fair fight, Steve. Okay, let's just say that. In that case, I'll probably see you down at the docks the morning after tomorrow. You may count on it, Steve. So, two mornings later, I'm down on the dock. Lisa's there, but the freighter isn't. We wait a couple of hours, and then we gradually get the idea that there must have been a tip-off. The freighter must have docked at another port. We dash back to the freight line office, but the joint is locked up tight. So there we are again, fresh out of Leeds. Lisa gets that end-of-the-line look again and leaves, and I head for a bar across the street. Ships which do not arrive when they should, this can be quite annoying. Huh? Who are you? Lieutenant Segarra of the military. May I uh, sit at your table? Why, yeah. You, uh, you are Senior Mitchell, no? I'm Senior Mitchell, yes. <laughs> How do you know? Your commissioner traced you here from Dakar. He spoke to me over the telephone. He would like for you to telephone him. Oh, yeah, I suppose he would like a report, but at this point, all I can report is that I've been on a wild goose chase and I'm beat. I... Hey, wait a minute. You mentioned something about ships not arriving. You see, senor. I also was very anxious that the freighter should arrive. You see, senor Mitchell, I do not believe this is such a wild goose chase as you think. What do you mean? For some time, I have been convinced that my country unlonely entertain some unwelcome guest. Oh? What have you got in the way of facts to back up that theory, Lieutenant? No, unfortunately, merely fragments of gossip from a few peasants. Yeah, that's what I thought. This whole deal seems to be fragments of gossip. I have in mind a particular plantation several kilometers inland from here. What about it? There is a high wall around the villa with barbed wire. It is rumored that the captain of the freighter stays there when his ship is in town. Oh? Well, the captain won't be staying there anymore, Cigarra. He got knocked off in Dakar. Oh, I see. As you probably realize, I, uh, I would like very much to get inside that via. But this I cannot do officially without some evidence of law violation. Yeah. But there has been no law violation. So it appears I can do nothing officially. However, if someone else wished to try to do something unofficially, I might be able to, uh, as you say, lend a hand. Oh? I am quite tired, Mitchell. Tired? Yes. I have some leave coming to me. It occurred to me I could take that leave at almost a moment's notice. I get it. Okay, Lieutenant, thanks. I may call on you later. Commissioner, I can hardly hear you. Jiggle the phone or something, will you? Is that better? Yeah. What's on your mind? I said I'm, I'm glad you telephoned, Steve. I've been trying to get in touch with you. Oh, what's the matter? Uh, when you called me from Dakar, you wanted the name of the clerk who claimed Captain Schiller died during the fall of Berlin? That's right. The one who identified a burned body as that of Captain Schiller. The clerk lied, Commissioner, and I figured you might have one of our agents in Europe run him down and question him. We can't find the clerk anywhere, Steve. But it's a her, not a him. Oh? Name's Lisa Nesvik. She married a Nazi colonel who was killed at Stalingrad. After the war, she dropped out of sight. Lisa Nesvik? Hey, wait a minute. Her maiden name wouldn't by any chance be Lisa Hessler, would it? Why, yes, Steve. How did you know? Ah, right, skip it. I'll call you later. So, Lisa Hessler, girl reporter, is actually the one who lied about Schiller's death five years ago. I head to her hotel in a hurry and get there just in time to see her leave by a side door. She gets into a car and drives out of town. I follow. Half an hour later, she pulls off the road and leaves her car. Then I spot the villa. 
It's got a big iron gate and a high wall and a high voltage wire running along the top of it. And I know this is the villa that Lieutenant Cigarro was telling me about. Lisa sneaks up to the place and looks it over from behind a clump of bushes. And this I don't get at all. If she's one of the outfit, I should think they'd welcome her with a velvet carpet and a brass band. But she's acting like she wouldn't be welcome at all. Finally, she leaves, and I'm about to follow suit when the gate opens and a bunch of peons trudge out and start working in the fields, all except one, who throws a couple of quick looks around and then sneaks off. He could be worth following, so I do. He heads straight for a village down the road and disappears into a bar. Great. He's just sneaking away from work to get a snootful. Then it dawns on me. Okay, let him get a snootful. It sometimes has a habit of loosening tongues. I sit down across the street and wait. An hour later, out he staggers. He sits down in the dirt by the doorway and starts singing. At least I suppose he called it that. Hi. Hello. You must be happy. Happy? Who's happy? I'm sad. Pahari. You've got a voice to match. What's the trouble? Pahari. Hey, look, Caruso, save the audition, will you? South Pacific's already been cast. No one likes me to sing. It's a sad world. All the time work, no time to sing. You uh, work out at the plantation? You see. Who owns it? Quien sabe? We never go near the villa. Oh, you've been ordered to stay away, maybe? See, si. No one likes me. Did you ever see any of the people who live in the villa? See si, three men. One of them dressed like a sailor, but he don't come there for a long time. Mm, that'd be Schiller. Who else? A tall man, and one not so tall. Yeah? What does this not so tall man look like? I don't know. I only see him from a distance. I think maybe he's a little bit crazy. Huh? He stands on a balcony and he makes speeches to himself. He... <laughs> I see. <laughs> you know... I think maybe I talk too much. I think maybe I better sing. Mm. You already have, Buster. <laughs> and thanks. I go into the bar, find a phone booth, and call Lieutenant Cigara. Yes, Mitchell. What is it? You told me you could go on leave at a moment's notice. The moment is now. Very well. Where? The villa outside the city. I'll be there as soon as I can. I go outside, but the peon has stopped singing. I bend over and raise his sombrero. Then I see why. You can't very well carry a tune when your throat's been cut. Now I know I've got to move fast. I head for the villa again. It's almost dark when I get there. I roost in a clump of bushes near the wall, wondering how I'm going to get in without being electrocuted. Then I hear the sound of engines. I peek out of the bushes. Five trucks are pulling up to the front gate. They're probably bringing those crates from wherever the freighter dog. Suddenly, it hits me. This is my big chance. The driver in the lead truck gets out and goes up to the gate, and I slip up to the last truck in the line. Before the driver can move, I nail him with a left, slip on his coat and cap, and slide in behind the wheel. By now, the rest of the trucks are rolling through the gate. I step on the gas, and then I feel something cold and hard in the back of my neck. A gun barrel. Keep driving straight ahead, Steve. What? Lisa? Yeah. Go on. Through the gate. Okay. So... They both chose the same way of getting into the villa. Yeah. But I don't get why you have to sneak in. After all, you're one of the boys, aren't you? So now we get inside, you turn me in and get a medal, huh? There. They're through the gate. Pull up to that little building off by itself. You can hide there. Come. Okay. Look, I still don't get this, Lisa. You must be in pretty solid with these boys. Why the hide-and-seek act? In solid. <laughs> that is very funny, Steve. If there were more time, I would laugh. Here they are. Inside. Hey, looks like a bunker of some kind or a bomb shelter. Yeah, it is. I recognize the design, Steve. It is identical with the bomb shelter under the Chancellery in Berlin. Mm. Now, would you mind telling me just what this is all about? You're not just Lisa Hessler, girl reporter. You were the one who claimed that Schiller was killed in Berlin. Yeah. I identified a burned body as that of his, but I lied, Steve. I know that. Why did you lie? My father, a naval commander, was murdered by Captain Schiller on direct orders of the leader himself. I knew the burned body was not that of Schiller, that the two of them must have escaped. I thought I would have a better chance of finding and killing both of them if they believed the world thought them dead. 
So you're the one who killed Schiller and Dakar, huh? Now I am to have the honor of killing one more. The man I'm convinced is in the villa. Hey, what are you going to do with that grenade? They're going outside, Steve. Look. I mean business. Move. Okay. Lisa, give this thing up. Let me handle it. Sorry. Don't you know that you're liable to get killed trying to pull a deal like this? Do you think that matters to me now? Here, into these bushes near the wall. There. It's far enough. This will be a convenient place for you to remain hidden. No, keep your back to me. Remain hidden? Hey, what? Oh. Goodbye, Steve. you get inside the wall? As I approached it, there was an explosion in the rear. It must have shorted out the high-voltage wire. I-, I was able to climb the wall. Explosion? Hey, the villa's on fire. So that's what Lisa did with that grenade. Mitchell, look. Two men running out of the villa. They are heading for the bomb shelter. Yeah, I recognize the tall one. He was a member of the German high command. How about the shorter one? I can't tell from this distance. He's got that hat pulled down over his face. Come on, we've got to find out. Who uh, wait. Look, the girl. It's Lisa. Slipping into the bomb shelter from the other side. That must have been her plan to set the villa on fire, knowing they'd head for that bomb shelter. The two men are inside the shelter now. Come on, we've got to get there before anything happens. Mitchell, ah. that shorter man. Do you think it is really... I don't know. Get down. Get down. Mitchell, that explosion. It was in the bomb shelter. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Flames are coming out of it. I'm going in. Be careful now. <coughs> Powder smoke. Yeah, this way. It's clearing out a little. There you could. Mitchell. Yeah. Three bodies badly burned. Look. A charred fragment of a dress. Yeah, that one's Lisa. The tall guy's over there. That leaves just one more, the shorter man. Mm. Right here. Yeah. Well, how do you think? Not enough left to identify. What do you think it might be? I don't know. I guess we'll never know now. Mitchell, maybe he wasn't here at all. Maybe he really was killed in Berlin. Maybe. But if he was here, how could he have escaped? Three people came in here, and now we see three bodies. Well, there could have been a guard in here, and there could be a trap door under all that wreckage. But it does not sound possible. No? Look around you, Cigara. What do you mean? This bomb shelter, it's an exact replica of the one in Berlin where he was supposed to have been killed before. There was an explosion and a fire there, too. In other words, this is the same identical setup as before. But Lisa must have been sure she had her men when she blew herself up. Yeah. She also could have been in on the gag all along and be willing to sacrifice herself to keep the big boy operating. This whole thing could have been just a setup, Cigara. See, but maybe... Yeah, doing a lot of maybe in, Lieutenant. Just don't forget the biggest maybe of all. What is that? If he did it before, maybe he's done it again. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian John Doe, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Be with us again next week at this time, when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. Dangerous Assignment came to you from Hollywood.